Hey everybody, how you doing? I thought today we'd do something different. Take you on a, a shop tour of the various places I work on my junk. So I'm at home right now, so I guess I'll start here. Uh, I have a small shop in North Reading I bought in 2017, but prior to that, everything I did was at my house here in Wakefield in the basement. So this is my basement. And I have, uh, you know, drawer units full of bolts and nuts and various clips and sundries and crap. And, uh, you know, a full bevy of tools and a really cluttered workbench. I still have all these throttle bodies out from the Sunbird video I just did. I gotta put them all away. And there's my toolbox I've had since the 80s when I used to work at a dealership. I was a dealership mechanic for a couple of years, but I've always been on the fleet maintenance field. So there's my big ass toolbox I no longer need at work. Uh, this is a Bridgeport M head mill. Uh, this is a 1946. I just bought this last week. Uh, if you've never moved a Bridgeport mill, it's, uh, it's quite a treat. They're heavy. They're, they're typically around 2000 pounds. This is the smaller version. The M head was the original version. Those are more like 1500 pounds. It's still no picnic. You know, it's, that's a lot of weight to be carting around. And so I had to rent a small U-Haul trailer and bring it home on that. And, uh, moving these things. Is really scary unless you know the trick. The trick is you put pipe under it. I just got some one inch or one and a half inch pipe at Home Depot, just black iron pipe. Amazingly, they roll really easy on top of pipe. So a little, little tip for you, but uh, this thing already has a, a VFD in it to make it run on 110 volts. It's the original three phase motor. It's only half horsepower. These are limited. Uh, they don't have a ton of power. It only has about three and a half inches of quill travel and the quill is only set up for a uh, number two Morse taper. So by design, the largest uh, collet you could put in there is half inch, but I have a uh, collet adapter coming. Uh, it's called a, an ER32 collet set. Basically it's a piece that goes in here and then it's fat on the bottom and it you know balloons out and you can put in bigger collets. But because you're trying to keep this distance as short as possible, let me zoom out here. It's they're short collets, like these collets are long. They have a long taper. Uh, the ER thirty two is probably half that length. They haven't got here yet, but when they do, I'll uh, I'll show you. And I'm trying to outfit this thing. I bought a big drill chuck off eBay. That was like forty bucks. I had to buy an adapter to go from number three Jacobs taper to number two Morse taper. Uh, that was like you know, ten bucks on Amazon. And I've had some vices I've collected through the years. I just had it at my shop. I brought them here so I can make use of them, but uh, this is an oldie, but uh, it runs nice and quiet. It runs pretty well. I saw it run at the guy's house, so hopefully I'll have many years of uh, enjoyment from this thing. Uh, there's my sandblast cabinet. I bought that new, geez, must have been the 80s when I was restoring my 67 442 convertible. At the time, it was like 650 bucks, I think, and uh, now they're over a thousand. Actually, I take that back. I didn't buy it in. Uh, the 80s. I bought my 442 in 92 and I sold it in 2003 and moved into this house in 2004. So I never had it anywhere but here that I remember. So let's say I bought it in 2003 or 4. But anyway, uh, let's see. This is my Anko milling machine. A friend of mine bought a house in Maine in like 2003 or 4. And uh, the guy he bought it from had a small machine shop in his basement. And my friend didn't want any of it, so we had an Anko lathe, and he had this Anko milling machine. They were both fairly new. They had barely any use on them, so I bought it. Uh, the lathe went to my company, to the garage, and the milling machine came here to me. And it came with some tooling, but I've bought a lot of tooling through the years, you know, collets and carbide uh, milling bits, all kinds of stuff. And I tried to keep it in good shape. Um, it's just limited what you can do with it. I mean, it's, it's, you know, no offense to the Chinese manufacturers. It's a Chinese mill. It's, it's not super strong. It's not super accurate. It's not super sturdy, but it's served me well all these years. I've had it for God, 20 years, 2004. I bought it. I think this is 20, 20 years. So uh, I had a problem the other day. I, I usually lube everything up with uh ZEP 70, which is a soy based lubricant. The stuff works the balls. The only problem I'm discovering with ZEP 70 is after you use it for years and years, it gets gummy. It dries up like gummy, very brown, like cosmoline almost. So this uh, quill lever 
was getting stuck. You'd have to pull it down. It was really hard to pull, you know, like, you know, really hard. And uh, finally, yesterday, I took it apart and cleaned it up. I just had to clean off all the old gunky Soy 70s. Now it returns on its own like it should, you know, like that's it's supposed to spring back by itself. I, I'm probably going to sell it because I have the Bridgeport now. I don't really need this anymore. This isn't the most accurate mill in the world. It'll do what you want to do. And it got me 20 years of use out of it. So, you know, I'm not bad mouthing it by any means, but they're limited. I mean, I'll show you one thing. I discovered yesterday I was I took the draw bar out to take out the collet to uh, take a look at the drill chuck and, and I was tightening it back up here's the draw bar right here and it broke look at this all it has is this one little plug weld right there to locate the nut to the shaft isn't that beautiful I mean seriously that's how they secure that so I gotta take it to the shop today and drill it out and grind it out and then weld it again I mean you gotta be kidding me but that's how they do it offshore, or well, they did. I think the machines are 95, so it's not that old. But, you know, you get what you pay for. I mean, that thing was probably 1100 bucks when it was new. Today, it's like 3500 bucks, which is insane, but whatever. Uh, this is a Jet 1224 lathe. This is the only lathe I owned until recently. So anything you saw me machine was on this lathe in my basement. Uh, this was owned by a friend of mine who rebuilt that transmission for us at work. He ran his transmission shop since the 80s. He was a teacher at Franklin Institute. And then he started his own transmission building shop when he got laid off one year in the late 70s and never looked back. So when he sold his shop, I think he's closed it around 2010, 11, 12, that area. He sold everything and he sold me this lathe. I think I bought it for 500 bucks. Uh, well worth the money. I mean, again, it's an it's a offshore built machine, but this is a nice lathe. It served me very well. I'm sure anybody with a real lathe would look at this thing and laugh. I mean, it's a you know offshore lathe, but it does what I want it to do. And I added a travel dial to it, which is uh, these are cool little gizmos. You make a bracket to go to the machine, and then there's a little drive wheel in here that runs against the side of the uh, bed. So as you run the bed left to right the travel dial reads out very accurate really cool so i added that way back i made that bracket look at my mad skills huh Ooh. Uh, so that's uh, that's a story on my lathe and i had a bunch of machinery over here that i had to exile over here and give you a quick take a peek at those this is an old uh, Delta carbide grinder. This is for the carbides you use on your uh, lathe. You rough them out on the stone side and then you polish them up on the diamond side. It's actually got diamond on it. Um, very little because it's expensive. And uh, that's what that thing does. It's very cool. Uh, this is a metal and wood bandsaw. This is a 1977 Delta. Delta Rockwell at that point. Rockwell had bought Delta. Uh, I bought this thing for 200 bucks. It was in pieces. Uh, these go for, you know, five, six, eight hundred bucks, depending on what kind of shape they're in. This one's in great shape. It's just got this Mickey Mouse um, guard they added for the belts, which is stupid because there's a round disc right there. I don't know if you can see it. Right there. See that round disc? That's a clutch. That's how you change it from metal to woodworking. That changes this uh, belt drive setup to engage this upper belt, which slows it way down because you have to run slow speed for steel. So it's, you know, duh, you're supposed to get in there. You're going to bolt it, which is stupid. Uh, someone didn't know what the fuck they were doing. He really should have had a hole in here that you can grab it, but whatever. So this thing works great. I keep it on the steel side all the time because all I do is cut steel. So that works awesome. Um, this you guys have seen. This is my son distributor machine. Again, I bought that for 300 bucks. needed a ton of work. I bought all the parts I needed to, to buy to put it back in shape. I cleaned it up, and it serves me faithfully. This is a Craftsman bandsaw. If you saw one of my videos where I went through the bandsaw, it was probably this one. Um, this worked great until it stopped working the other day, so I got to take it apart and see what's wrong with it. It's probably something stupid. This is just a, a cheapy $100 20-ton press I bought years ago to press things. I barely ever use it, but uh, once in a while you need it. That's a spare hood for the Sunbird. I have my friend at the body shop paint for me because the one I have on the car is a big lump in the hood. I got to take it off one of these days. 
That's a spare dashboard for the Sunbird. I gotta swap it in one of these days. These are just a bunch of parts. This is more parts. There's a whole 455 volts here somewhere in pieces. The block's over there, but there's some aluminum Edelbrock heads for a 455 volts, or you know, any old V8. Roller rockers and water pumps and brakes for my truck and wiring harness for the Firebird. So many stupid spare parts here. Spoiler tips for 83 or 4 Hurst Olds. They always fall off, so a guy on uh, eBay used to recast them out of fiberglass, so I bought a sex. I have a Hurst Old spoiler over here. It's in the corner next to the sandblast cabinet. If you can see it, yeah, it's right there. It's missing the tips, so I bought the tips to put on it one of these days, and I just never got around to it. Someday I'll probably just sell it. I don't think I'm going to have any more G-bodies, but uh, anyway... There's a battery charger that my father bought in the 70s. <laughs> I think served us well. That's a fold-down back seat I bought for the Camaro, so I could put a fold-down back seat in it. There's the back seat for the Camaro. I gotta take that cover and put it on that seat, just like I did on my Firebird. That's just a, a polisher grinder I bought for my kid at work. That's a belt sander. That's a, uh, maybe call it a radial arm saw. I forget what they call that thing. Uh, what do you call this thing? This is a, uh, I don't know. Who cares? It's a saw. <laughs> I have a steel cutting blade on it, though, so I can cut steel if I need to. Sawzalls and grinders and all that crap. Uh, this is the original motor for my sunbird right here. It's buried in a corner, but back up, you can kind of get an idea. It's just buried. I took it out back in the... Early 2000s to rebuild it and never did. And this one next to it is a 90 Sunbird turbo motor. Uh, I bought that as a spare in the junkyard when you could buy them for, you know, a couple hundred bucks. And uh, it's just sitting here. This crate, that is the last of my GM fitted blocks. That's a two liter turbo Sunbird block. It's just the block and the pistons and rings. There's nothing else in it. I bought two of those. One of them is in my car. And this is the other one. I think I paid... I don't know, 110 bucks a piece for them, something like that. It was super cheap. Um, used to be a place on eBay, Neosho. I can't remember, Nebraska, something, something, something. Uh, but they had these blocks. They had like four or five of them, so I just bought two of them. And I've been sitting on this one forever. So you're not really going to need a block. Although, before I bought this motor right here, I had bought another one. And when I took the turbo off it, it put a rod to the block right behind the turbo. So in that case, you need a block. Uh, but I mainly bought this because the pistons, it's got brand new pistons and rings in it. And those are the turbo forged pistons, the Molly pistons they come with. Try finding those. They're not out there, trust me. Uh, what else? It's just a bench uh, vice. This bench actually was from a friend of mine's transmission shop. Not the guy with the lathe, the other guy. So it's an enormous bench made out of a shitload of timbers in it. It's heavy, very, very heavy. And I added the backboard to it. And that vice from my friend Steve shop. When he passed away, his father sold everything he had. So I bought this vice. It's the biggest vice I think I've ever seen. It's huge. And out in the garage, I'll show you just the uh, storage area. This was a two-car garage. We bought this house in 2004. It actually ended right in front of the Sunbird. There's a line on the floor. That's where it ended, right there. So we uh, we had this addition put on the house. Upstairs is a playroom for our kids. And they added two bays for the garage. So it's a four, four car garage, basically, you know, two and two. Um, so everything I've done until I bought my shop in 2017 was here on my back, no lift, which sucks. If you guys have a lift, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't have a lift, I strongly encourage you to get a lift. You know, the ceiling in this garage is only, let's see, that door is seven feet tall. So this section, it's a dropped family room we have. So this section is only seven foot six, seven foot eight. It's not high enough for a lift. When they built the addition, I made sure that they not push this piece up, but it's still only, well, if that's seven foot six, this is probably eight foot six. So it's, it's barely high enough for a lift. You could put one in here. It's, I'm short, so it will work for me, but it's kind of short. And this side, there's duct work in there for the HVAC, so they couldn't raise the ceiling up to match this one, so it's low, like over here. But anyway, this is where the Sunbird lives when I'm not driving it. Uh, that's just a MIG welder I have over there. 
That is a uh, Lincoln, I don't know what it is, 185, something like that. Oh, it's a 140. That's a Lincoln 140 MIG welder. Just more tools and equipment out here and uh, more spare parts and junk. All kinds of tools and crap. That's my cherry picker. Also build valve covers, 204R filters and all kinds of stupid stuff. But uh, a set of ladder bars a friend of mine wants to buy. My old parts washer, essential vac for the house. Nothing crazy, but uh, so this is where I live. This is my home shop. So I'm going to my other shop, my real shop, uh, in a minute. And I'll take some video of that and show you around there. I mentioned to my friend Dave I was going to make this video showcasing my home shop. And he said I should focus in on stuff I hang from the rafters in my basement. I never really thought about it, but uh, I guess that is a good use of space. So this is all I do. I uh, <laughs> you know, to get the stuff off of the shelves and the floor. I just take some uh, sheetrock screws and drive them into the uh, beams and hang stuff from them. You know, there's a the old header I used to run on a Sunbird, and there's a Grand National steering wheel and a whole bunch of Oldsmobile distributors. And there's an MPFI intake and a rear disc brake setup and engine frame brackets and Sunbird turbos and air cleaners and spare coolant fans and another rail I didn't know I had. That silver thing, that's called an FMU. It's a fuel management unit. The whole idea with that is you hook that up to your fuel pressure regulator and under boost it increases your fuel pressure. Uh, I used it for a little while back in the old days, but... Uh, Never really did a whole lot with it because I met my friend Shannon who told me to uh, stop manipulating my computer chip. So we did. And here is a set of head gaskets for a Olds diesel motor. And a Sunbird pan and windage tray and a Sunbird distributor and a shifter. And I got a whole bunch of dual gate shifters here on the wall. Uh, the power seat track for G-Body. I got a lot of stuff. And uh, more Sunbird headers and exhaust manifolds and spare coolant fans and another distributor and flywheel covers and another coolant fan and another coolant fan and <laughs> Jesus Oldsmobile headers when I used to run a race car with a 455 G body those are uh, two inch primary tube headers and a battery tray actually there's two sets of Oldsmobile headers here one is a set I modified for a, an A body to fit a G body those are two inch tube and the other set is um, Hooker. I think they're one and seven eighths. They made them for a while back in the 90s. Uh, and just, uh, there's a pancake air cleaner for an old GTO or Firebird and sort of Oldsmobile valve covers and or a shifter and sort of Buick V6, Turbo V6 head gaskets. I had a wagon, a uh, cutlass wagon with a Turbo V6 in it. And I popped a, a chromatic head gasket at the track, over boosting it and detonating. So people tell you that you can't blow a chromatic gasket. That's bullshit. I, I did. I don't know if you could see it, but I, I mean, look at it. It's mangled. I, uh, I blew it out good. So what else? Uh, just hose and braided steel line, that kind of crap. And there's a whole slew of steering wheels. Uh, hang on a second. There's some steering wheels. This one used to be on the Firebird. That's a Cutlass 442 Sport Wheel. It's leather wrapped. This wood one was on the Firebird. My brother ran it in there for a long time. And there's some Oldsmobile pulleys. I got uh, screwed up to the ceiling and trunk rubber. And this is how I store milk crates. I just put hooks in the ceiling. I hang them up there and get them on my way. And uh, there's some Sunbird intake manifolds. 1.8, 2 liter, 2 liter, another MPFI. Uh, this is kind of funny. I bought a 88 Sunbird Turbo one time to part it out. So I took the steering column out of it. Uh, I took the whole header panel and hideaway headlights off it. The wiper panel had a brand new front bumper cover. So I grabbed that. There's the wheel flares. Just stuff that, you know, you, you know you're not going to find in the future. So I stashed it away. Uh... There's the intake manifold for Oldsmobile. That's a small block Chevy do-it-yourself header kit. 
Here is another Sunbird turbo steering wheel I picked up on eBay. It's got the little turbo FI cap on it, which I guess is super hard to find. Um, there was a guy on eBay, the junkyard, parting out a turbo Sunbird. And I happened to see the steering wheel in the picture. And I said, hey, do you want to sell a steering wheel? I'm like, yeah, sure. So I bought it. Uh, this is actually a front pipe for a 2012 Shelby GT500. I had one. And I had dreams of hogging out the uh, catalytic converters. So I bought this pipe. And never used it. Um, it's kind of cool that it's like two and three quarter inch pipe. That is some huge exhaust pipe, but uh, it's a little mile. It's, you know, I think I paid a hundred bucks for it. I mean, it's, you know, the catalytic converters alone are worth that. And there's some Oldsmobile oil pans. That's a stock one. That's a Mylodon seven quart. There's some Nosh valve covers for big block 442. Uh, Buick Grand National Turbo. Tranny pan for 400. That is a carved LS intake manifold. They've screwed to the wall. Yes, I screwed things to the wall too. Oldsmobile fin valve covers and a whole slew of extra parts. There's the intercooler I used to run on my Sunbird way back. That's a Grand National intercooler that uh, I had the inlet outlet modified with 90 degree fittings. That worked great. There's a ton of Oldsmobile intake manifolds stashed in here. I don't know if you can see them or not. I just, you know. Stacked in the corner, there's a bunch of performers, there's a dual quad, there's all kinds of stupid stuff in there. Oil coolers, tranny coolers. There's a 67 400 volts block in here. There's a 455 volts block here. Just, you know, that 67 400 volts block, it's a two barrel motor. See the intake, that's what they call a turnpike cruiser. It was a uh, high compression, small cam, two barrel carb, with like a 241 axle, so it would. You could cruise 75 miles an hour all day and get 20 miles a gallon was the idea, but whatever. So anyway, I have tons of stuff stashed up here in my rafters, as well as uh, speakers from my basement so I can listen to the radio and blah, blah, blah. Also build gaskets everywhere. I mean, if you look at this pile of gaskets here and here and all the parts I have, you can see why when I built that 403, I wanted to put an Olds motor in my car because I want to use up all this stuff I have lying around. I have tons of Oldsmobile parts. I have a cabinet right here. It's all full of Sunbird parts too. There's one here. I think this one's got Sunbird parts in it too. Oh yeah, it's all Sunbird parts. Yep, and I got Sunbird gaskets stashed up in the ceiling and camshafts and shifted cables and all kinds of crap I uh, just stashed away for you know the day I need them. So you're not going to be able to get parts of these cars forever. It's already getting hotter and hotter and hotter. This is that uh, Super 60 Turbo that's wasted. There's a throttle body for something. God knows what. I think it's an MPFI. But anyway, so yeah, he uh, Dave thought I should uh, just show you some of the stuff I have stashed in the ceiling. So there's some leftover parts, my 442 taillight housings. Is the uh, spare front spoiler for the Sunbird and the closeout panel that goes with it. So uh, there you go. There's some junk in my basement and stashed up in the ceiling. So hope you uh, were inspired to do something creative with your junk. <laughs> if not, you know, enjoy the show.